Good, good evening. How are y'all? So, um, I just wanted to hop on here real quick because, you know, the Bible talks about finding the joy in everything, you know. Sometimes it's, well, it's actually count it all joy is what, is what Paul taught us. Count it all joy. So, sometimes it's hard for us to count things as joy, you know? And just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the fifth anniversary of my dad's passing. And today was the fourth year of my sister's passing. In January will be the fourth year for my mom. Um, the month of October has been, was a really rough month, and it really got me to study in what Paul meant by count it all. Count it all as joy. In all things, we have joy. If you have the Lord in your heart, then in all things you have joy. And those around you, watch how you respond. To things that life puts you through. And if you're a Christian and you and you have God in your heart and and people know that you're a Christian, they're really gonna really gonna watch how you respond to to the ups and downs that life can put you through. Yes, I miss my I miss my dad and my mom and my sister every day. And I think about them every day. But I also count it as joy. Because they were all so sick. And now, they're with the king. They're happy. They're whole. They're well. There's no sickness to be found. No tears. To be found there. Where they're at. All there is. Is joy and peace. And worshipping of the king. Through that whole ordeal, I learned how to count it as joy. And I also learned what it meant when we were taught that God makes all things work to the good. Of his children. <sighs> Last month, October, was really hard. Really hard. I thought I was gonna. Thought I was gonna have to go through it again. Because <sighs> after just four days of him being in the hospital. One of the doctors comes in and tells me, she says, only thing I can tell you to do is take him home, put him on hospice. Discontinue all life-saving treatment.
treatments and medications. And I told the doctor, I said, you are out of your ever-loving mind if you think I'm going to do that. We're going to exhaust every avenue we have. And if all of that fails, then we might discuss that. He was pretty sick. Pretty sick. He had several infections going on at the same time. But I learned through it all how to count it as joy. People around you watch how you respond. And if you respond... With worry or fear, then you're not responding the way that we're taught to respond by Christ. We are taught to pray without ceasing, and sometimes that doesn't mean that does not mean. 24-7, you're on your knees praying. To pray without ceasing means that, yes, one, you do pray to God. And it doesn't mean that you go to Him, Oh, Father. No. Sometimes, just simply saying, Jesus, fix it. It's a prayer to Him. The other part is listening. Just listening. And the last part is when you just don't know what to say. You say nothing. Because he knows what's there. He knows what's in your heart. Sometimes things happen because God's trying to take you through a learning season. And I believe that's what this was. It was a learning season. God was teaching. And we were his students. He was teaching Corey. And he was teaching me. He was teaching us exactly what it means to say, Lord, I don't know what your plan is. I'm just trusting it right now. I can't tell you how many times that I sat there and talked to the Lord and through the whole month of October and said, look, I'm just... I'm just a passenger on this crazy roller coaster. You're the one that's guiding it. You're the one that's that's driving this roller coaster. And at one point, at one point, I just didn't know if he was going to pull through. And that was the point that I told him that I love him. And that if he was ready to go because he was tired, it was okay. It would be okay. And I told him, I said, and if at any point you see Jesus standing there, don't fight him. It'll be okay. Because I've never seen him so sick and so weak. But I sat right there in that in that hospital room with him and I filled up a journal 
doing Bible studies and talking to God and and he was released today he was discharged today from the hospital and he's on his way home God is good God is so good people If you don't know him tonight, please get to know him. I'm not promising you that life's going to be easy because it's not. Because once you sign up for that, for that ride, for that walk of life, to follow Christ, you have signed up for a very hard walk. Because scripture tells us that the world hated him first. And if we follow him. The world will hate us too. And it's true. I'm just so thankful. To God. I prayed for a healing for my parents and for my sister. And they did get healed. It just wasn't this side of glory. He took them home. I prayed for my husband's healing. I fasted and prayed. That's all I did was fasting and praying while he was in the hospital. And he got healed. This side of glory. And I'm not trying to fool myself. Because I know. That one day. He'll be healed. On the other side of glory. Just like one day. I'll be on the other side of glory. I just wanted to get on here and share that with y'all. Because God is so good y'all. God is so good. That is why I love my Jesus. Oh, that's why I love my Jesus, y'all. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy to be glorified. He is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy to be lifted high. He is worthy of the title. King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, yes, he is. And because he lives, no matter what comes at me, I know I can face it. Y'all have a good night, a good evening, and I will talk to you later. Love you. Bye.